Now that we have our character sheets added to the campaign, we should now put together some visual representatives for them on the tabletop. Any graphic you place on the Objects and Tokens or GM layer is automatically set as a token. I'm going to place this image I have for our Human Barbarian PC to demonstrate. First thing you probably noticed is this trio of input bubbles that pop up above the token after selecting it. You can use these to track pools and numbers. Due to system agnosticism, they aren't assigned to track anything in particular, so you can use them however you want. For my game, I feel my group will only need one bubble for HP tracking. I could just put the character's current total HP in the bubble and call it a day. The problem with that is that I won't be able to see that number if I don't have the token selected. This isn't a problem if I utilize another feature that tokens have. If I click on this gear icon, I bring up the token settings. We're going to ignore most of the stuff here for the moment, and go straight to the section on the right side that's labeled as bars. The colors of the bubble input correspond with the color designated on the bars. I'm going to head to the red bar and place the maximum HP the PC has in the right field, and add a random number to represent the PC's current health. Now after saving my changes in this window, we see a red bar displaying above the token. Since I docked the current HP, we can also see that the bar is only partially full. If I change the number in the bubble input, it will automatically adjust the bar for the new value. What's nice about the bars is that I will always be able to see the current HP of the token, regardless if I have the token selected or not. One of the added bonuses of a linked character journal is that I can set a bar to follow one of the journal's attributes. If we go back to our Barbarian's character journal, we have an attribute that was created for the character's HP. Hopping back over to my Barbarian's token settings, I can go to the bar that I've been manually adjusting for HP and set it up to observe the linked journal's HP attribute. Now the tokens bar will fill and deplete just by editing the character journal, or if I alter the bubble value on the token itself, the attribute will change to match on the journal. Don't want your players to see a particular element? Not a problem. Back in the token settings window, the advanced tab has a list that you can designate what token features are visible or editable by your players. In Pathfinder, a PC can receive status ailments or boons. There's a way to keep track of these as well with Roll20 tokens. This button opens up a list of over 30 random status indicator icons. You can add as many as you like to a single token, as well as adding a number between 0 through 9 by hovering your mouse over the status icon and pressing the desired number on your keyboard. This not only allows you to keep track of status effects, but you can use them to differentiate NPCs. For example, it makes it much easier for my players to indicate which bandit they're attacking if each NPC is assigned a different color icon. Another thing you can do is tint a token. Go to your token settings and you'll be able to choose a color swatch to tint a token to. For instance, if our barbarian was raging, I could tint the token red to remind the group that the character is in the midst of a rage. At default, the only person who can actually click and move tokens around the table is the GM. If I'm setting up a PC token, I should make sure that it's assigned to a player. There's two ways I can do this. First, I can just select a player's name in the Controlled By section of the token settings. This method can be a little troublesome if my players haven't logged into the campaign yet. If they haven't, then their username won't be available to select and assign the token to. The second method hops over that particular hurdle. If I select a character journal to represent the token, then the permissions of the character journal will carry over. We can link a token to a character journal in this fashion. When properly linked, you can transfer tokens from page to page by just clicking and dragging the journal to the tabletop. Alternately, you can also just copy and paste tokens the old-fashioned way from page to page. Now that this token is linked to the journal, you probably notice that once selected, several buttons appear in the upper left corner of the tabletop. These are called token actions, which are macros for dice rolls. I'll go in depth on how one can speed up a campaign by creating your own macros in the next video of this crash course.